Welcome, everyone. This is the Tuesday Live Show. I'm Jeff St. Laurent, and I'm excited for today's show because this is not just the Tuesday Live Show. This is the last Tuesday Live Show of 2018. I can't believe I'm saying that, but we are heading into the new year 2019, and we have fantastic opportunities ahead of us. And so today's topic is how to finish the year strong. You know, today is the, what is it, the 18th of December. So we still got a little bit of time in this 2018 calendar year. And I want to show you and inspire you how specifically you can maximize that opportunity so you can finish the year strong. Before we get going with that, we have a few housekeeping items to take care of. I do record all these live Tuesday shows and I put them in my university on my website, sellingcoaching.com. So please check that out. I have a fantastic group of resources there for you. It's all complimentary and it's all designed specifically to help you transition to a full-time business, which is that's what I do as your mentor coach. Right on the homepage of sellingcoaching.com, I have a fantastic free resource for you called um, Launching Your Full-Time Coaching Business, Your First Three Vital Steps. So please take advantage of that. Enter your name and email address. That's going to put you onto my email community, and it's going to have you access to the, the uh, audio and video training that I have there for you. And additionally, it's going to allow you to get onto my community, like I said, so you can really get a good idea of how I stay in touch and stay in communication with my audience, which is a vital thing for you to be doing. So as people are coming on to the live show, it's great to have people coming in. And today's topic is so, so important um, because if we're going to finish the year strong, well, how about this? Said differently, if we are going to start the year of 2019 off strong, we've got to finish the year of 2018 strong. And there's a huge correlation between that. So in other words, um, here's the what I don't want to happen. I don't want you over the next couple weeks before the end of the year, um, no matter what you celebrate with Hanukkah and Christmas and, and whatever else people celebrate, right? Whatever the holidays are for you. Um, there's, there's a tendency to have a lot of downtime and, and you know what, you should have more downtime than you would normally have because it's the holidays, it's new year's, you have some extra days off the holidays fall, you know, in, in, you know, towards the beginning of the week. So you, it's not like on a weekend where you don't have the extra days off, so to speak. So what I need for you to do is, is I need for you to start recognizing is while you have extra time off, spend more time with, with the family, et cetera. Let's look at the days where you are working, even if you're working less than normal. Let's look at the days that you are working. And I want you to have the mentality that I want to start 2019 off strong. And don't expect to start 2019 off strong because of what you're doing once you hit 2019. What's going to help you get to that spot is, is by going in the, the last part of 2018 and finishing strong. And I'm not saying work more than normal. I'm saying in the time that you have to work, work harder than normal, more efficiently than normal. And that's going to help you create that momentum. In the past, I will say, I would have the last few weeks of the year. And trust me, I've had the years, plenty of years, especially early on when, when I didn't do that, right? It was like, oh my God, it's, you know, the holidays are here. And I used to kind of like sit back and relax a little bit more, take more time off than normal. Not necessarily a bad thing, but what I found is, is that when I did that, and you'll know this, the more you do your business, the more, more time off you take, and then when you come back into it, it feels like you're starting from scratch. And obviously, the longer off you take, it, and it literally feels like you're starting off from scratch, even if you've been doing it for a while. You know, I've been doing this full time since 2004, and if I take too much time off without doing anything in my business, it's, it's, it's just like feels like it's dead out there, and it feels like no one's there anymore. It doesn't mean that's necessarily the case, but in an instance, and if, if you had some inconsistencies in your business, you'll know that sometimes it, it does feel that way. And sometimes that is the fact, especially if you haven't been doing it for a while. So in order to start off, don't make the mistake of actually taking too much time off. Your 2019 starts today. And so, like I said, we got to start looking at our schedule. And I have a shirt on underneath, no, no stripping, but I'm <laughs> taking this. This is a t-shirt that one of my clients had printed. And it says, the schedule is my boss, right? So as an entrepreneur, we don't have a boss. We are the boss. However, you'll hear me say, if you're a student of mine, is that we're not a great boss for ourselves because we can be at times too easy on ourselves. Because if I don't know what I'm doing or I don't have a full day lined up and I don't have a lot of urgent to-dos or any clients that are on my schedule and I'm in my office and I'm alone in my house or wherever, whatever is with, with, your, with your situation, your office situation, it's too easy to be like, I'm hungry, or I gotta go to the bathroom, or I got some laundry to fold, or 
you know, pretending you're working and then you all of a sudden you're surf surfing on Facebook and then you're watching YouTube videos and next thing you know, your eight hour day of like focused business time turns into you just kind of putzing around, really not accomplishing much. And so you can't be the boss. So this goes back to my first thing is leading into what I'm talking about for the last part of 2018 to finish strong is you've got to start working with your schedule and having your schedule be your boss. It's such a vital thing. And what I mean by that is, is, is you've got to be accountable for your time. And, and yeah, you can have a coach, you can have a mentor coach like me, you can have other people, you can have a mastermind group, you can have w accountability partners, whatever. I found that that, that isn't necessarily the answer. You've got to become self-accountable, but accountable to your schedule. In other words, you've got to be able to account for your time. So if I were to take my schedule, which I threw on the floor before this because I need a desk space, right? I've got a, a paper calendar. I don't use electronic calendars, right? Yeah, you can pay for these subscriptions and things like that. It just adds to your, your monthly overhead, even if it's 10, 15 bucks a month. Or even the free stuff, it's, it's, it's cumbersome and it's, uh, it's sometimes it can be compl complicated. And I don't want anyone having control over my schedule, meaning if I have electronic books books out there where, where people can actually put themselves into my calendar without me knowing about it, without me approving of it, without me qualifying them. I don't want just anyone getting in my schedule, right? You have to qualify to get in my schedule. I don't just, I, I just don't give up my time to anybody and no, nor do I want an electronic thing like click on my website here to, to schedule a free discovery session. What have you done to earn that 10, 15 minutes with me? It doesn't mean I don't, I don't do that with, with people and have to create those conversations, except for I have a conversation with, for I qualify those people. Do they qualify for my time, right? People qualify for your time when they're serious about what they're doing, not just because of like, oh, they want to pick your brain or they want to talk to you. It's like, I'm all up for conversations. Those of you that know, I, 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 have, I create conversations and I go back and forth with people and I connect with as many people as I possibly can because I want to create those relationships. But I don't just let anyone into my schedule because the schedule is my boss. And I don't want to. I don't want to have my boss telling me what to do. That's wasting my time and a lot of fluff time. And I'm not saying talking with people is a waste of time. I'm saying we've got to make sure we talk with the right people. So when I say your schedule and the schedule is the bosses, you got to be accountable for your time. So if I go to any one given day at any part of this year, I can look through and I can tell you where where my time has gone. And and if I'm in my office, let's say for a six hour period, and let's say I have three clients in those period in that time frame right so three of my six hours I had clients well what did I do with those other three hours I need to make sure at the end of my day more importantly I need to make sure at the beginning of my day I know what I'm gonna be doing in those quote three hours that are free time within office space that's my admin time that's my follow-up time that's my marketing time I need to make sure that I know what I'm doing in that time so whether it's at right at the start of my business hours or you know in between clients or whatever it is I need to make sure that I'm productive and efficient this morning I get into my office at well I had a client this morning at 7 30 so it was an earlier day for me a little different day because I'm traveling you know for the holiday but either way I was in my office at 10 o'clock this morning so between 10 a.m. And now when I started my live show at 12.05, what did I do in that time? Well, I can tell you what I did. I can go back to my calendar and I can read off all the things that I did. I actually had 11 of my um, podcasts, my Selling Coaching Minute, if that's one of the things that I have, my podcast. And I had to have those recorded, edited, and published. So I recorded them yesterday, but I edited them and I published them and I got them ready. So when I come back from my vacation, um, over, over Christmas time is I have all those done for me. I don't have to worry about that. And I also did a few other items in there, following up the clients, you know, invoices, things like that, as I'm starting to wrap up my week before I head off onto vacation. But in other words, I can tell you what I did in that time. So not only can I tell you what I did, but I need to be able to tell myself what I'm going to be doing in that time. So after this Tuesday live show, when I'm done, I have a two, a three, and a four o'clock clients today. And then at five o'clock, I'm done. I am wrapping up, you know, for the week. And I'm in, and so in other words, after this live show is done in that, let's say hour, um, 15 hour and a half of time after this show is done. If I don't have anything waiting for me, meaning if I don't have not, they're not to do's, they're must do's because they're in my calendar. When something's, there's a difference between having a to do list and having a must-do list that's been uh, in a calendar. So in other words, when you, when you have your items that you need to do, they're not going to get done unless they found a home in your calendar. And that's my point of what I'm saying here is when you talk about the schedule being your boss and, and talking about finishing strong in the last part of this year, and this is going to carry over into you know the new year and, and every day of your business moving forward, 
But I want you to start applying this now and practicing this now because you can you can create the momentum at the start of 2019 by finishing these last few weeks nice and strong. And that is, is by being accountable for your time. So if and this is what I'm doing like in, in, with my one on one mentoring clients, we're applicable for people. And even in my group um, mentoring uh, calls my live sales conversations, live sales conversations.com where I work with those people. These are some of the things I'm starting to work with them and really get tight on with, with people is we've got to be accountable for your time. So I need to go back to each and every day. And if you're saying number one, I need business hours. So you need to find your business hours. When am I working? When do I start work? When do I finish work? You've got to have a start time and an end time because you got to know when you're working and you got to know when you're not working. And when you're not working, do laundry do other things, have fun, play, spend time with family, watch TV, do whatever it is that you do, hobbies, just go back, go to sleep, whatever you want to do, that's fun, that's not work. But when you're at work, work, but you need to know when you start and you need to know when you finish. And then when you have those work hours, you need to know what am I doing in these work hours? And you've got to list those things off. So that's these are some of the things that I want you starting to do and I want you to start to practice. These are some specific strategies that I want you guys working with over these next few weeks. I don't want you starting in the new year. So in other words, especially around time uh, when, when there are holidays or you're going on a vacation or there's a, a extra time you know, throughout the year where you maybe have more time off or whatever's happening, is I find that when I'm really focused and I am accountable for my time and I'm accomplishing things and I'm marketing myself and, and then ultimately when I get some new clients, in other words, I'm getting paid, and then all of a sudden it comes time, like today at five o'clock, it's going to be like, boom, I've been working my ass off these last few days and over this past weekend and, and prior weeks, preparing myself for this time off where I have a full week off where I'm going to Florida for Christmas and so forth and so on. But the point is I've been working my ass off and I've been working extra hours and I've been really focused. I've been really intent on doing some specific things, not only to maintain my business, business and, and take care of everything so I can still have some emails going out. I can still have some information going out, staying in front of my audience, getting my podcast ready. So every day I can still be in front of my, uh, my audience, whether I'm actually working or not, right? So all that stuff is building value for my audience. It's communicating with them, it's staying in front of my audience, big, giving value for them, and it's building value for what I do as a mentor coach behind the scenes. In other words, while I'm not working, it's still building value. So it's working for me. That's what we got to create with our marketing system. That's what I do when we work with me as your mentor coach. So what I'm doing is I'm setting that stuff up. So at five o'clock today, I'm done and I can relax. And the reason I do that is because when I'm off, when I'm on vacation, I can recover better. I can enjoy myself more knowing that I worked my ass off and that I prepared myself for this. I've been in the situation where I've slacked off and I just taken it easy and I didn't, let's say, do the work that I, let's say, knew I needed to do or that I wanted to do. And then I had some time off and I didn't enjoy that time off because I'll say it like this. I didn't deserve it. You know, if you're going to take time off with us for a holiday or just a simple day off for that matter, because it's a nice summer, sunny day and not New England right now. But anyway, it's a different time of year. But the point is, is that if you're going to take a day off, you've got to deserve it. You've got to deserve it because you've earned it. Entrepreneurship is about deserving and earning. We get paid not because we show up like we do at a job. I could show up in a job nine to five. I punch a salary, I punch a clock, whatever it is, and, and I show up. And, and as long as I just I do enough not to lose my job, right? I don't get fired. And I get paid. Entrepreneurship, not, entrepreneurship is not like that. I just can't show up every day and sit in this office. And if I don't produce results, I'm not going to get paid. Entrepreneurship is about creating results, and that's what we get paid for, not hours. We get paid for results. So we've got to create that time. But if, but if we're not deserving it, we're not earning it, then we're not going to have that wrestle time, and we're going to feel more guilty and more shameful than we will if we do that work. So summary of this is I've got to get you've got to get your office hours. When do you start? When do you finish? And you've got to figure out what you're going to be doing in those office hours. If you don't know what you're doing in those office hours, reach out to me. I'm here for you. And it's asking me questions, whatever you need to ask me. But I want to find out a little bit more. What are some of your challenges? Maybe we work together as a mentor coach. Maybe you get in my group program. It doesn't matter to me how it works. Go to my university, sellingcoaching.com under the university. I've got tons of, of great information in there. It doesn't cost you a thing. It only it, your only investment in that is your valuable time. Use the search bar. But I have those resources out there for you. But what I want you to do is I really want you to start getting disciplined now for the new year. When we start getting disciplined now, that starts to create that momentum. And that discipline comes from using your schedule. You've got to know what's coming on to it. When you don't know what's coming up next, what happens is we drift. And if we drift, where do we get our results from? So moving forward, I want you to start thinking about 
um, what it is that why I want to create. You know, and a lot of people start to look at when we're looking at the new year and saying, okay, what am I? I'm going to start creating my goals and things like that. I actually had one of my clients send me some some of the goals that they were creating and stuff, and it was so well laid out, right? And it was it was not only like here's what I need to do and why I need to do that and why it's important to me and who's going to help me with this and what are some of the specific actions I need to do. But I, but I said, I'm like, this is great. So it's it's all laid out there for you. But with those specific actions, I need to see more of those specific actions. But most importantly, one of the things I said was, is we've got to get those actions and we've got to put them in that calendar. So one of the other big takeaways I want you to take from this is that whatever it is that you need to do, you need to get them in the calendar. So each and every week, one of the things that I, I put in my calendars is those of you that have worked with me and those of you who have followed me for a while, like I said earlier, if you go to sellingcoaching.com on the homepage, I've got that free resource resource for you. Uh, you know, how launching your full-time coaching business is the first three vital steps. But when you put your name and email into that, I said you can get on my email community and you can start to observe how I communicate with my audience. The reason I want you there is I want you to start understanding my system and how I work and how I communicate and how I market and stay in front of my audience. But those of you that have followed me know that system. So even like that, when I send my emails out, I send my emails out on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Obviously, I do my live shows on Tuesday. In between that, I'm doing social media with that whole system that I work with that I help you create when I work with you as your mentor coach is I help you create your whole marketing structure, email marketing, social media marketing, and then obviously any other marketing in terms of live events if that's about what that you go on. But if you follow me, you know that structure. But all that stuff I put in my calendar, right? So every single week, on Monday, I know what I need to do and I write that in there. So it doesn't matter how many or few clients I have. I know what are my available office hours that I have that day and I got to write all that stuff in there. And those are my non-negotiables. And in there are, are sometimes there are some items that are, I want to get them done today, but if they don't get done today for whatever reason, that's okay. But I don't just leave them there. I find them a home on another day. Maybe it's the next day. Maybe it's towards the end of the week. It doesn't matter. But but there are different types of items that I want you to have in your calendar. There's the ones that are revenue producing and non-negotiable. Those are the ones like sending your email out to your audience. Those are marketing activities, getting your message out there. And you need to know on what days am I doing those things and they need to be in your calendar. If they're not in the calendar, what happens is they don't get done because you don't know that they need to get done and then you forget about them or you conveniently get distracted. Right? So we need to get them in there and then that blocks off and allocates our time. And another reason I want you to get those into your calendars is because I need you to know when you're done. Like there are some days where let's say I'm in my office till five o'clock. Like today I'm in my office till five o'clock. I have clients right up until five o'clock. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be in my office until five o'clock. But also the good thing about that is, is any space before then, it's time where I need to know what I need to get done. And because at five o'clock I'm going to be done, I know I need to get these items done before my first client at two o'clock, you know? And so what that does is it creates an urgency for me. And I notice that when I, when I have urgency that I create in my business, I can get things done. But see the challenge of entrepreneurship is that there's no urgency when you're in your office by yourself and there's no, there's not a boss looking over your shoulder or there's not a people or teammates that are expecting some things and there's deadlines. A lot of it is all self-imposed. So if you notice, I just said, it's like I've got an urgency to get X, Y, and Z items done before 2 o'clock today. So see, what I've done is, is in, in the system that I've created for myself and that I help my, my mentoring clients with is I help you create, create urgency in your own business. And that can be a challenging thing to do. But when we create that urgency, we can get some things done. That's the point of that is we've got to be able to get some things done. So I want you to be able to create that urgency for yourself. And I want you to really think about closing this up right now as I want you to look at your calendar and I want you to say, okay, what does this look like? Today's Tuesday. Today's the 18th, right? So Christmas, if you're celebrating that, it doesn't start until, you know, beginning of next week after the weekend. And even that with that, we've got a Monday, which is Christmas Eve day, right? That's a viable work day, right? Unless you've got something planned and you're celebrating, you're traveling, you're being with it, whatever, or whatever, whatever holidays you're selling, Hanukkah or things like that, is just find the days right now where you're going to work and find the days where you're not going to work. So number one, decide that right now. Number two, when you find the days that you're going to work, let's get some really good hours in there in terms of what we're going to focus on. And here's the thing, some of the specifics I want to do as I close this, this show out is I want, to st I want you to start thinking on this, is that I want you to find people who are interested in not hiring you, ultimately yes, but I want you to find people who are interested and serious 
about going after a certain goal or going after a certain something in their world, their business, their life, their relationships, whatever it is, right? And even if you're starting off and you don't know where you're at, you don't have an audience yet or whatever, I want you to start connecting with people. Hey, and you can start asking questions like, so the new year's coming up, you know, what are some of the things you, you're looking forward to creating in, for yourself and your business and your life and your relationships in 20, 2019? Start creating some of those conversations right now. So in other words, I want you to start to find people who want something bad enough, right? Selling, what I teach, selling coaching, right? Hel helping you transition to a full-time business and how to, that selling aspect is a couple things. It's the need and the timing of that need. So we got to start to think about who has a need that they're going after and how badly do they want that need, right? And we start to find out, that out, we start to say, well, why now? Why is now the right time for you to do something about that, right? And, and the cool part about this time of year, as we close the year and open a new one, I mean, it's just another day at the end of the day, right? But all of a sudden, you know, the, the time's ticking, right? It's 2018, another year's gone by. It's, it's an automatic, like, reflection point. And a lot of people look back at their lives and they go, what the frig? I did crap this year. Or, well, I'm in the same spot. I'm still fat. I'm still overweight. I still haven't done anything in my business. I'm still broke. I'm still in a bad relationship. And I'm still whatever, is, whatever my label is for not enough of what I want in any area of my life. And I'm not saying everyone's like that. But I'm like, this is a spot where if any of those things are standing out, they're, they're kind of popping out for them more than any other time of the year. So people are reflecting on that. And so now it's a great opportunity for us to be in front of those people. And in other words, I don't want you to miss out on any of those opportunities. So I go back to all the logistics I've talked about today in terms of the scheduling, in terms of, you know, having your schedule be your boss and some of the specific activities of starting to create some of those conversations to start digging up some of these needs. And the reason I want you to do that is because I want you to find some potential people who are serious about that. And then if, if, if they want something bad enough and if the timing's there, I want you to ask them if they'd ever consider taking a closer look at how you could help them if they were to hire you as your coach. That's the approach. I want you to get a handful of those approaches in before the end of the year. That's probably a handful more than you've done maybe this whole year if you haven't done much this year. But you're not going to be getting any clients until you create some of those approaches. And I don't want you just walking up to people with a heartbeat saying, hey, would you want to hire me as your coach? I want you to create conversations to find out where people are, what they're looking for, how serious they are about that, why now, and if that's the case, ask them if they'd ever be open or would they ever consider taking a closer look at how uh, you could help them if, you, if they were to hire you as their coach. And if that's the case, continue the conversation, invite them to a complimentary session and see where you go from there. And the cool part about that is imagine if in the next few weeks before the end of this year, imagine if you could get one person just a couple people, right? Even just going through that process, just feeling more comfortable with that process, even if it doesn't result in a client, you're gonna learn something through that process. You're like, wow, I used that statement that Jeff said in that Tuesday live show, and it, like, wow, it worked. Or maybe it didn't work in this, maybe it worked in the sense that they didn't move forward with you, but they realize, you realize that you asked that question and they're like, no, I don't think so, or they hesitated, and, and you didn't go to a complimentary session, and you start to understand like, wow, this whole qualifying thing works, as opposed to just, you know, sending out all these invitations for complimentary sessions and then getting blown off and people not hiring you and giving you every excuse in the book why they don't want to work with you at the end of, of, a, of what you think is a complimentary session, which they're just afraid to say no in the first place. So in other words, either way, you're going to get better, whether it results in a new client or whether it results in maybe a no or that learning process for you. And the best part about it is, is that when you get to that spot, you feel like you've grown. You feel like you've you've created some space for growth in your business and hopefully some results. And you know what? The best case scenario is, is you get paid. And now you take that break and you feel good. You feel relaxed. You feel accomplished. And that's important in our business. You know, the psyche of our business, the psychology of our business, it takes a strong mind. It takes some strong will to keep going in our business. And if you've noticed, the underlying theme of, of everything I'm talking about today is, is that I'm not relying on me to do this. This goes back full circle to where I started this as I close the show today is that I'm not relying on me because I'm not trustworthy in terms of my, my being motivated and inspired all the time. Guess, guess what? I'm a human being and I'm, I'm being vulnerable with you is because I, I, if I don't have this schedule, right? If, if I'm, the schedule is not my boss and I don't list these things out and I'm not doing all these things that I'm talking about on a regular basis and create the discipline for that. Rather, my, my schedule then creates the discipline for me. So it doesn't mean I'm not disciplined. I have moments of discipline, but, but the schedule then creates discipline for me. So I don't have to rely on myself, right? My, my whole system creates 
discipline for me because I've got my live Tuesday show and it doesn't matter what I look like, what I feel like, what my morning's like, how much I slept or not, you know, today, how many clients I have, what I don't have. I got to get my ass on here. I do my live show. If I don't know what I'm talking about, it doesn't matter because guess what? At 12.05, I go live and I've got to figure something out and make it up if I don't know. But the point is, is that my schedule drives me and I don't have to rely on myself. And that's a good thing. Because yes, I have confidence in myself and, and, I, and I have skill sets and so forth and so on. I've worked hard on myself, but I've got to allow that stuff to come out. And that's where that, all, all the kind of the tactics of, of setting up that self-accountability through your schedule really helps you on this process. So hopefully this has been really helpful for you. And, and again, at, at the end of the day, you've got to take something from this, something from this and begin to apply it. And this is what I do with my mentoring clients is that, you know, especially when they start summer, just like I'll be, you know, dumping stuff on them and we're doing this and we're doing that and blah, blah, blah. And, and we'll have a full hour call and we go through, you know, a, a, a boatload of to do's and they're just like, oh, bring it on. And they're flexing their muscles and they're feeling good. They're drooling and they're ready to get off the call. Right. And like that picture. I'm drooling right now, right? So the point is, is that then there are some people that as much as they want to be there, based on whatever's going on in their life, personal work, they've got another job, they're, they, they're full-time mom, dad, you know, they've got kids, they, there's a lot of other stress going on. And as much as they want to, you know, run at a hot, fast pace, they can only handle so much. So wherever you're at with this information here today, and over the next few weeks, it's a small amount of time, right? It could be a couple extra days or you know a handful of days that you really focus on but just if you're not picking anything just pick one thing one or two things that you can really focus on one concept that i talked about today that you can really get good at and practice over the next few weeks that you can start a discipline on so that you can start to see those results and that's it we've got to find your pace you've got to find your pace and finding that pace each and every day it's a weekly thing. It's a monthly thing. It's a quarterly thing. It's a you know half year. Then it becomes a full year. And then we're going into 2020. And when you do it a day at a time, when you take it at that and you build one skill set at a time and you build one concept at a time, it starts to work and it starts to snowball. And then next thing you know, a year goes by, two years goes by. And instead of a year or two go, year going by and you being in the same spot or worse than you were before, you've gotten better because a little bit every single day adds up to a lot if you've got enough time in there. And that's my message for you today.